Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 104. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Tricks 101 to 106. Hey, this trick is going to be amazing. I'm recording this on September 24th, 2008, and we are in the middle of a financial crisis. The government, considering whether to bail out a bunch of banks, seven hundred billion dollars so this is all about debt I want to show you how to do a web query from a uh, website that has how much debt we're getting and then I want to do a bunch of formulas uh, so we can figure out how much debt we're adding per day per hour per minute and per second uh, first we want to do I'm gonna click in cell B18 and we're gonna do a web query in 2003 you got to go to the data menu and then external uh, uh, import external data. There's a little note up here about how to do it in 2003. In 2007, you click on data, get external data from the web. Now, actually, before we do that, we have to have the website address, and I have it up here in the corner, so I'm going to, I can't click on it with my uh, left click, so I'm going to right click and then hit copy. See if that works. In fact, once I um, select it with my right click, I can come up here and scoop it out that way and copy and then hit escape. All right, I'm going to click down here in this cell B18. And I would like to uh, do a web query. And a web query allows us to go out to the web to a website and automatically connect our spreadsheet to that website. I'm going to click up here in the address bar. See, it's, it's by default going there. I'm going to click up here and then control V and click go. Temporary, that's okay. This site um, updates every like two seconds. So now I'm going to hit, uh, how do I do that again? Oh yeah, go. There it is. There it is. When you do a web query to a site, if there's yellow, little yellow um, arrows, you can click on them and that means you're allowed to, to connect this website to your spreadsheet. So now I'm going to click that little X there because I want the whole thing and then click import. And um, all the properties should be fine. Save query definition. Enable background freshing. We definitely want to do that because then we can right click and refresh. And then since the debt is increasing every second, we should get a, a very dynamic spreadsheet here. I'm going to click OK. It says it's getting it, and there it is. Now, the first problem, if I want to do a formula, is if you click in this cell, this is text. It came in with a bunch of spaces and commas and junk. Not only that, but if you want to, um, by the way, just two days ago, this number, it says national debt was continuing to increase an average of $2.16 billion per day. Just two days ago, it was $1.8 billion or something like that. So we are getting into big debt trouble. You know, uh, the funny thing about the federal government is, this is a problem of too much debt, and so they're uh, borrowing more debt to solve a debt problem. Uh huh. So, but the problem here is if I want to do a formula, I can't because it's that number is text with a bunch of spaces. Let's see if we can do a formula up here. We'll use substitute equals substitute. The text is going to be um, this cell right there, and the old text. Uh, comma and the old text we want to find and remove is a space so we have to do double quote space double quote and then comma I want to replace all those spaces with some new text and that's going to be double quote double quote which means blank and then close parentheses I'm going to control enter and if you expand this column right here you see how it's aligned to the left that immediately tells you that it's text now a lot of formulas can deal with text and do things, but some can't. Luckily, there's a, f um, a function that takes a number that's shown as text and converts it back to a number. So I'm going to click in that cell in F2, and then I'm going to use the value function. There's actually a date value and time value function, too, for text, uh, for dates and time that are come in as text. So there it is, value. I'll come to the end here, put a close parenthesis, and then enter. And you see it's immediately lined over to the right, which tells it's a number. It's a it is a number. Now, the estimated population, well, this is going to be a little bit trickier. How do we um, extract that number right there? Uh, well, you know, we could probably just use the right function. I have a different formula up here that I did before uh, that extracted it from the middle, but 
the population is probably not going to get above this many digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 9, 10, 11 digits. It's not going to go up to the next uh, digit, and there's not going to be any decimals because they're counting whole people. So we could probably just use right uh, 11. So let's try that. I'm going to come up here. Equal, and by the way, this formula I have over here will work too. It's just more complicated. That's the amazing thing about Excel, you know, and especially doing the same problem over and over. You always figure out better ways to do it. So write. I'm going to click in this cell, which is a bunch of text, right? Comma, and I want the right how many characters? 11. That just says, hey, take the 11 characters from the right. And then Control Enter. Uh, it looks like there's a space there. Um, let's do 10. Maybe I counted wrong. Maybe I did. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, I don't think I counted wrong. Let's see what happens when we do 10 here. Oh, yeah, no, it needs 11. I guess that's all right. Let's put the value around it because, again, that's thought of as a text. All the text formulas, write and mid and substitute, always convert it to text. So I'm going to put the value around here and see if we can get a number. Enter. Oh, there it is. And it's even formatting. It's taking the formatting. Um, so each uh, citizen's share of this debt would be equals that divided by this. Well, oh, only thirty-two thousand. Wow, that's that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of money for each one of us. Now, uh, debt added per day. That number is hidden right here, and here we have to use the mid. It's um, there's a bunch of stuff in front and a bunch of stuff at the end of it. So um, I want to just extract the to the point, which is a character because it's text. It's not a decimal, but it's thought of as a character. And then the 1 and the 6. So I need those four characters. Let's see if we can find that uh, mid. We'll use the mid, which allows us to extract uh, parts of the middle of a text string. And we're going to have to find that dollar sign, too, there. So let's go up here and see if we can do a formula. Equals mid. And the text, we need to click on this cell right here. And the starting number, now we don't, um, we probably could count in here, but just in case it changes, there's a function that will find the dollar sign and tell you what position in the, the text string it is. So let's use that. Starting number, we'll put comma, and the starting number is going to be find. There's also search, but find as it case sensitive. Uh, find text, and we're going to put in quotes a dollar sign. Comma, and within what text? This text right here. And you know, we can do our old trick that if you, in the middle of a formula, you could figure out what that evaluates to by highlighting it and then hitting the F9 key. That's dangerous. 59 is what position that is. You know, and not only that, but to count on your fingers, 59 would be uh, more difficult than using this find. I'm going to control Z. Now, that's the start number. And how many characters do we want to do? Well, there's one, two, three, four, including the decimal. So four, comma, four and then close parentheses. Enter. Oh, 2.1. Oh, there's a dollar sign, too. So uh, we have a problem with that find, because what the find did was found the actual dollar sign. So since we actually want to start at the 2, we need to come up, hit F2 to put it in edit mode. And right here, after the find, we'll do plus 1, because that'll find the dollar sign and then go one more. Now I'm going to hit Enter. There's the 2.16. Notice it's text. Actually, uh, again, this formula over here is longer. We don't actually even need to do that. We can just hit F2. And since we always need to multiply that by a billion, uh, we can say times and then 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then Enter. And that will convert it. Anytime you have a text string, if you uh, one trick is to multiply by the number 1, and then it converts it to a number. Uh, since we have a number we need to multiply by anyway, uh, that one's pretty good. So it turns out when we actually shot the video, we came up a much, much better formula there than that junk over there, and a much better one here than that junk over there. That one's pretty good, though. All right, so let's do debt per hour. Uh, that's per day, so equals one cell above divided by 24. Enter. Oh, debt per hour. Does that really say 90 million? Hmm, that's a lot.
equals, by the way, we can get Excel to tell us if you can't see with your eyes. I'm going to hit Enter. I have Speak on Enter turned on. $90 oh, I guess that's not so bad an hour. I mean, equals, and then equals that one per minute divided by 60. $1.5 million. And then equals this uh, divided by 60 again for 25, seconds. So $25,000, whatever. So there it is, web query and a bunch of formulas to figure out how much debt there is. See you next trick.